Air of Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, live from or videoing here in uh, the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. I know some people try to correct me on that and say Tel Aviv is actually the capital, but in my opinion, it is Jerusalem. So I'm going to tell you just like it is. Very interesting things here going on. Quite a bit of news we're going to cover here in a very short period of time. But one thing that I am very cautiously watching is Pope Francis' visit to the United States. We know tomorrow morning he'll be getting his rock star welcome just as he did in Cuba, but much, much grander and a lot more fanfare. And then he'll be meeting also with President Barack Obama. The following day on the 24th, he'll then address both houses of Congress. And on the 25th, he'll actually address the United Nations. Very interesting as things are going on. But there was something I thought was interesting as I was watch, uh, looking at CNN on their particular website there, CNN.com. They, they said, quote unquote, in one of their videos that Pope Francis is a powerful political partner. Yet at the same time, John, uh, Josh Ernest, who is the White House press secretary, says that his trip is not to advance political, a, a, a political agenda. Well, you know, it's really not a contradictory statement if you think about it. He is certainly a powerful political partner. He needs to promote, promote no one's agenda but his own. So it's not going to be any particular politician that he's promoting, but yet they need to come and bow to him just like they all do when they go to Rome to get his support to begin with. Once they bow, then he'll back them. I kind of noticed that with Avi Lipkin the other day when he was actually at the, at the uh, conference that Brother Kellen Davison put on called uh, Reconciliation with Israel. Avi expressed in this conference here that he was invited to the Vatican wasn't able to make it himself. His son did go in his place. He was instructed to meet with the vicar of, as they call it, Palestine. Really, uh, they would say Israel. It should be the proper way. But he does take, Avi Lipkin does meet with him in regards to starting the political party, the Judeo-Christian political party. But Avi is not in favor of the Muslim people whatsoever. In fact, he, as he states that they are the true goim. It's not the Christian people, but it is the Muslim people that are the goim. Well, the vicar of Palestine, as they call him, said straight up to Avi, we've already gotten word from the Vatican, we will not support your party because you are not for the Muslims. So truly, if you don't get the blessings of the Pope, you won't get very much support and it'll make it very difficult to go very far in any political arena. Another interesting thing as well that CNN pointed out is that he is very much like the Obama administration on his stance for gay marriage and other things or gay rights and things of that nature there. In fact, the Pope actually stated here, if a person is gay and seeks God's will, who am I to, to judge him? That was a direct quote. Well, you know, in one way, there's some agreement there. I don't judge a person, but I do judge the sin in which the person does. And how in the world can you seek God and live in sin at the same time? This is exactly what we're seeing all over the world. A Sodom and Gomorrah, a very wicked and evil generation nonetheless. It also, they also stated that pro-choice and pro-gay rights uh, advocates were invited to his uh, welcome ceremony in Washington, D.C. The White House says that Pope Francis deserves uh, deserves de diverse a diverse audience and of course the pope i'm sure is quite happy with that he seems to be kind of like the devil he can play with just about anybody that he likes anyway another very serious news going on rt news is reporting that the u.s is bringing new advanced nuclear bombers to germany and i believe that's the f-35 that's capable of delivering these uh bombs here it's the b-61 12, uh, 12s, uh, nuclear weapons that will be brought to Germany. Now, those of you that may not be familiar, in 2009, Merkel, along with a very strong back backing by the public of Germany there, was wanting to remove all nuclear weapons from Germany. And in fact, the only ones that are still there are, are actually on an air base uh, called uh, Buchel, uh, Lufthansa Buchel Air Force Base, and they're in storage but they could be moved at a moment's notice there. 
But according to the article that RT is actually reporting on there, that in the third quarter of 2015, the B-61 nuclear bombs will be delivered to the Lafwafs Buchel Air Base. On one correction there, it is actually the um, Reinhard West Germany is where the nuclear bombs are stored now in Germany. Also, RT is reporting too, and this is a little bit older news, but I just happened to catch it and I thought it would be worth sharing with you guys as well. China had been testing back in June a hypersonic nuclear delivery vehicle, which the U.S. called an extreme maneuver amid rising tensions there between China and the United States. The, it actually travels at 10 times the speed of sound. That's actually 12,231 um, KPH is, I'm not sure what KPH is, but 10 times the speed of sound is extremely fast and nothing that could stop it. Iran also is boasting that they have the capability now the supersonic missile as well that they claim that only Russia and the United States has. You have to understand this is a major threat for Israel because this type of weapons would actually cause uh, or, or, or excuse me, this type of weaponry, if true that Iran does have the capability of a supersonic missile, practically nothing that Israel has in its defense of capability could knock down that type of missile out of the sky. Very serious concern for Israel. Also, RT News reported, and this was yesterday that this happened here, or actually last night, President Vladimir Putin made an emergency trip to Russia, to Moscow, to meet with Vladimir Putin over his concerns of Russia building a base there in Syria. And while they were having that, uh, Putin assured him that, there, that Israel has no need to worry about anything. He said, in fact, Syria is too busy trying to save its own nation to start a war on another front. But, of course, Netanyahu also expressed concern that the advanced weaponry that goes into the hands of Syria and Iran from Russia end up in Hezbollah's hands, who often target Israel. Not to mention Israel's concern about the situation between the, uh, the Tehran and their coalition with different uh, forces there in, in Syria that are building up a terrorist organization near the Golan Heights. A very serious, very tense situation there uh, indeed. But uh, in other news there that I really wanted to bring to your attention is something that came out on CNN news there regarding Captain Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn of the U.S. Army is now considered partially retired, had to leave the Army early along also with Sergeant Charles Marlin. And the reason being, these two men were dismissed from uh, or removed from active duty immediately was because they had taken a stance against Afghan, uh, actually military leaders that were working with the U.S. in Afghanistan there. They were uh, vehemently opposed to the rape of little boys. But the U.S. government, according to Ca uh, Captain Dan Quinn and also as well as Sergeant First Class Charles Marlin, had said that they were told to turn a blind eye and not pay attention to what was going on in order to maintain a good relation with the Afghanistan, uh, keep the Af Afghans uh, relationship going strong with their military uh, things that they're doing there in the Middle East. But yet, Dan Quinn, Captain Dan Quinn, could not, and who could ever blame him, to stand there and watch little boys be raped by grown men that are military commanders of the Afghan army. And in one case here, he picked up a particular man there, an Afghan uh, commander, slammed him many times on the ground and threatened him that if he ever touched the little boy or came near the little boy's mother again, he would have some serious consequences to pay for. You know, it's, it's sad to see that when the Obama administration will put the humanity of people, little children especially, civil rights, human rights, and human dignity, when they push that aside for their own political agenda, trying to save face, don't want to upset no one, then something's wrong with the administration. This administration needs to be voted out. My only concern is, is will they be voted out? Or will a worse administration come along as well? Of course, when the government was asked, the Department of Defense did say that they never had a policy of standing down when human rights are being violated. But it was a different story altogether from Sergeant Dan Quinn regarding this matter. You can find that on CNN. Of course, we are posting all of these articles on our Facebook page where you can follow these as well. 
And one last bit of thing that I'd like to share with you. We are at Yom Kippur, the holiest day for the Jewish people on their calendar right now. This is when the city shuts down. No cars in Jerusalem will drive anywhere. In fact, Jerusalem is the only city where you actually see that in Israel, pretty much so. But, of course, little and small Jewish communities throughout Israel will be also closed as well. But my son, Ethan, Ethan Benun noticed a very interesting thing tonight that he shared with me, something he'd taken up newly here recently. He started watching the FlightRadar24.com's radar system about flights around the world. He's very interested in aviation and navigation and how it's actually done. So he likes to watch and see what goes on. And as he saw tonight, he noticed and brought to my attention a very strange phenomenon. All the flights in Israel not only were grounded, but flights out of Jordan and out of Egypt had intentionally gone around, gone around Israel. They did not even fly across Israeli airspace. And this is ever since he's been watching this evening. I thought that was kind of nice. The countries around are actually honoring Israel's holiday of Yom Kippur. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live here in the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. Shalom.